Welcome to our Bible study tonight. It's Sunday night, and we can't wait to share with you what God has put on our hearts yes. because we can have on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. That is a promise from the Lord. I know, and, and we have so to good. learn how to walk in that. Yes. And we're going to be discussing that today about supernatural economic turnaround. Ooh, I like that. Because each one of us need it. That's so good. And it's so true. Um, we've been talking about prospering in tough times, and this is part five um, of this series. And I've been enjoying this series. Well, I have it's too, because you never know what's going to come out, That's but it's true. all good. Yes. And we need to realize, like we said, I think it was like two lessons ago, everything's going to be all right. And let that sink into your spirit yeah. tonight. Yeah. Every single thing is going to be all right. Even though it might not look all right, even right. though it might not feel all right, even though the news says it's not all right, right, every single thing is going to be all right. And we just need to continue to speak the Word yes. of God, believe the Word of God, yes. walk in the Word of God, and realize Jesus wouldn't have said it if it wasn't true. Amen. On earth as it as is, it in, is heaven. in heaven. His kingdom residing in our world. That's right. Right? Heaven That's invaded right. earth over 2,000 years That's ago. That's right. And it still continues to invade. We have the Holy Spirit and angels on our behalf. That's and right. And when we have that confidence in our spirit, then all of a sudden we're going to see, like you said, things turn around. It turns around and we need to live in that turnaround. Yes. And Jesus likes the turnaround, right? Yes, he we does. We see that in the scripture that he actually went into the temple and he turned some things upside down. Yes, he did. He economically turned some things upside down and that prophetically is speaking to your life as oh, well. Oh, I like that. Thank you, He's going to be turning some things around. He's going to be taking those things that look distracted and messy and out of whack and he's turning the tables for you to Tonight. Yes, he is. It's Amen. your day. Amen. So let's get our Bibles out. Let's yes. turn to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And we're going to be staying there for a little while. We're going to kind of break it down. So we're going to look at verses 1 through 3. And we're talking about Jesus and again a boat. Amen. He liked boat. He did. Well, you have to realize there that was, was nothing else. Well, <laughs> I'm sure that he had a donkey. <laughs> uh, but we're going to talk about Jesus and Peter yes. and the boat. Yes. So let's look at Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. And we're going to break it down. Yes. And then we'll go on to and the next And this was verses. before Peter really became Peter. That's and right. And so he was actually Simon. So when we're saying Simon, we actually are speaking of That's Peter right. that we know of. So uh, Luke chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, One day Jesus was standing by the lake. The people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. Right. So we see that people were coming to him like normal, right. listening to what he was having they to say. They saw the anointing and they knew the anointing. They were responding. Right. Verse 2, it says that he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. So they're doing their job. They're minding their own business. That's right. They've got their hand to the plow. And so we see in verse 3 that he, this would be Jesus, got into one of the boats just kind of inserts himself in this situation. That's right. He gets into Both the boat, the one belonging to Simon, who is Peter, That's and right. asked him to put out a little from the shore. In other words, I want you to sail out. I love this because what he's actually doing is he is taking a stance of saying, you know what, even though you're the fisherman, I'm going to tell you what to do. And I love it also. That's right. And then <laughs> also for the musician in me, he knew that he had to come away from the shore yes. so that the water and all those mm. things would help for him to be heard yes. for the people. I love that. So he's like, hey, fisherman, you go t I want you to do what I'm going to tell you to do. And then to the, Peter. Then to he Peter. said, we love Peter. And okay, then, go ahead. And then he said that they sat down and he taught the people from the Oh. That's Jesus teaching them. Yes. And we see the message Bible said in verse 1, the crowd was pushing in on Jesus. Mm, wow. That was probably another reason why Jesus yes. wanted to get in the boat. Get me on the boat. Get me out. Yeah, but, but I love how he's telling the fishermen, like, I'm just going to randomly hop in your boat and you're going to do this. But it's what fantastic. I want you to see here is that in verse 1, we see that the crowd was hungry for Jesus. Mm, wow. They were hungry for his teaching. Wow. They knew that his words were life to their bones. Yes. And so as you were saying in verse 2, it says the fishermen were washing their nets. Washing their in nets. other words, they were pressing into God. No, they were literally doing their job right. for their calling, which in the natural was fishing. Right. They weren't sitting there pressing in, like you said, to the, to the ear of Jesus. They weren't leaning in 
into him. They were leaning into life. They right. were leaning into work. They were leaning into the the day to day, Monday through Friday, eight to eight life. Right. They're and, not leaning into the to the. Ear and of we the can Father. also see the comparison between that and Martha. Remember mm. Martha? Yes. That's who I am. Martha, Martha, she Martha. was going and fixing everything because yes. Jesus was coming to the house. Yes. Mary wanted to sit at mm -hmm. his feet. Yes. And these men, they were doing their job. They were not in any way doing something, but we can see as the time goes on that they had had another non-productive day. Yes. Things were not going well. Things for were them. not going good. And isn't that that so true for some of us? We feel like we we have our hands to the plow. That's right. We're we doing have, our job. We're doing our job. We're doing everything right, but it's just not working. Verse four. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, oh. wait, wait, wait. Okay, here we go. We're stopping. Because <laughs> the answer was right in front of them. Oh, that's good. That was worth you interrupting. Thank you. Before. I appreciate that, yes. Master. Thank you. But it is so true. So often we forget the answer is right in front of us. Wow. That the is Word true. of God is right there in front of us. Yes. And so Jesus asks permission. I love it. He's kind. Because my thing is, he commandeered the boat. <laughs> That'd did. be like me all of a sudden walking and someone sitting in my car. And saying, hey, drive over here. I know. <laughs> and Simon was like, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever wow. you want to do. There's a willingness that was there. Yeah, there was a willingness. And so what does he do? Jesus teaches mm. from the boat. Wow. That Jesus, that uh, Simon said he could have. So now you can get to verse four, verses four through seven, because we're going to see something for Peter. Go ahead. So I may, I may read. Okay. You may read. Luke chapter five and verse four. It says, "When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch.'" So now he really is telling him what to do. Right. How because to do his before, job. <laughs> before it was just, I'm going to use your boat, boat and I'm going to preach. But now I'm going to tell you how you're supposed to do your job. So because Jesus only did what he heard his father, father say and yes. do. So here's God saying, I'll tell you what, have him cast. Let's I love go. this. Okay. So Simon or Peter answered, Master, he's, he's telling him the truth here. We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but... Don't you love it when we insert a good but? Yes. But because you say so, I will let down the net. That's right. So there was an obedience that came. Sometimes God will tell us to do something. Oh. He'll say, hey, I need you to go deliver flowers to this person. Something really small. Hey, I need you to give this person $20, $50, $100. We can always come up with excuses. And we can say, instead of the but because you said I'll do it, we can say but because of my economic state but because of my time schedule, but because of how I'm feeling, but because of, That's right. and instead of saying, okay, Lord, I, I don't really have the resources or the time, but because you said I'll do it, That's I'll right. do it. Instead we say, but I can't do it. King James says, nevertheless. Wow. I like, I that. like that. Nevertheless, I'm going to do it. Okay. It says in verse six, when they had done so, when they immediately obeyed, there's quick Obedience. action there. Yes. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. We're seeing their cup run over at this That's moment. Right. We're seeing an overflow That's happen. Exactly right. Verse seven. Paper clips. Verse seven. Verse seven. They signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. Isn't that fantastic? Yes. When you got to call your friends and say, hey, you got to come help me. Storehouses. Store before. this. Yes. There's so much goodness that we're That's overflowing. Right. So it says that the partners came and it not only filled the boat that they were in, but it filled the other boat so full that they began to sink. Peter loved things that were leaky. Glory to God. I know. I love it. So we're going to break this down. Verse four. Verse four. Jesus. Okay. Jesus hears, go put your let nets down. Yes. Now, all of a sudden, we're looking at the fact that the fisherman, the commercial fisherman, is being told by a carpenter. Yeah. You realize? Yes. That's, that's how he was looked at. Yes. That they had toiled. I think you had said worked hard all night. They I don't had know worked how. hard all night. Okay. Toiled means to work hard. Toiled. 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 Told. Told. Okay. Told. <laughs> they were tired or fatigued. Toiled. They were tired, weary, and exhausted by the burden of trying to do their job. And wow. again, I think about that because so often we become weary with the word. Yes. Wow. And so, and then here we're talking, nevertheless, 
Mm -hmm. It was, oh, wow. you said butt. But. Which, you know, what is get your butt out of it? But. You need to get your butts out. You need to get the nevertheless yes. in. I will let down the, the net saying, I'm going to obey your word. You already yes. covered this. That was wonderful. And so Peter reconsidered. Wow. He reconsidered it. That is Because so he good. doesn't even know who Jesus is. Yeah, at this point, it's total introduction. It's complete introduction. And what an introduction to the Savior. No, no. Because in this moment, you're seeing word being spoken, right? right. We, we know that in, in the book of John that the word became flesh. So the word is right. being spoken. Obedience is the immediate action of Peter or right. Simon. It's the immediate action that's taking place. And when we walk in immediate action, we're going to see the supernatural. We're going to see the supernatural. We're going to see the and supernatural. It's so interesting when I look back on my life, and I know for you as well, when God will say, do something, that's and right. you do it, you see doors open that you can never imagine. And you see abundance and supernatural you increase. You see overflow of increase when you're quick in that obedience. And when you kind of drag it out and you go, oh, well, I'll take care of that tomorrow. Oh, I'll do it another time. All of a sudden you start missing opportunities. Well, you're delaying your blessings. You are delaying the nets being casted and the boats and being And I sunk. even covered that this morning when we were talking about, you know, that we're guilt free. Yes. And I also talked about Samson. Wow. That he was a man whose mother had incredible things spoken over her child, yes. but he compromised. He did. And because he compromised, God still was there for him, but he didn't receive all the destiny yes. he could have had. Now, online service, you'll hear that next week. Next week, yes. Next week, this morning. Park and praise. praise. You have, yes, but park and <laughs> praise. So I want you to know, we need to expect the supernatural. Yes, when Jesus to. speaks, we have to understand. There has to be that quick obedience. Okay, so let's look at verse 6. We're okay. still there. And it said, a great multitude of fish mm. and their net broke. But I want to tell wow. you, I know how many fish there was on that net. Okay. This is not revelation knowledge because Jesus said, look at John 21. I know, I didn't tell you to do you it. You didn't tell me clip. to do this. I wanted to make certain that you would go, oh my goodness, how did you know this? How did you know this? John 21, 11. You're going to know how many fish were in the net. Okay. okay. John 21, 11. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land. Full of large fish, 153. I can't count at that, John. Well, can you imagine? John, one, one fish, two, two fish, three fish. I know. One fish, two fish, three fish, four fish, five fish. See, you're you know baby shark, you yes, know. <laughs> but they, they even have the amount. 153 big fish were in that net. Big fish. That one must have been some big, big fish. fish. So the whole point of me really okay. putting this into point okay. is when we are obedient, yes. which is what Peter was, he received a big harvest. And it wow. allowed him to receive after he gave to Jesus. Wow. That's so good. Isn't that good? I, never, I never realized that. Because that harvest for Peter. Did you know that? I didn't know that either until you know I found that? it in the Word of God. John oh. 21. But that's verse John. 11. Yeah. John was very detailed. Yes, he was. He was. But he wanted to know, wanted us to know how many fish. Do you know my favorite scripture in the book of John is when... 316? Well, duh. Second <laughs> favorite scripture is when um, he, it, it, it was John, and Peter mm -hmm. had discovered that Jesus had, had risen from the grave, and they went to go tell the other ones, and they go to run, uh -huh. and it says, and John outran Peter. I never really yeah. thought of it. Yeah, and it's like... Really? You're, you're really going to just put that in there? Yeah, John Wood. Because John Peter. Wood. He was the beloved. He was the beloved. He wrote yeah. that. The beloved. Yes, yeah. the beloved. That's like a typical essay when you go to write an essay and you're like, yes, Michelle, the awesome one. The awesome one. Yeah. The one who had a birthday on Friday. That's right. That's right. Happy birthday to you. I'm not old. <laughs> so you can just put your little happy birthdays there. Did, but I yes. wonder if he count. I really wonder if he went one... Two, I don't know. Three, it was three. Peter's harvest. It was. I love it. Good. But I also want you to understand that because Jesus gave Peter a heavenly revelation, mm -hmm. okay, yes. it made certain that the earthly information didn't mm -hmm. take place anymore. That's so good. Because the earthly information was there's no fish. Wow, yeah. There's no fish out there. I've been out there working all night. 
Yeah. And now you're giving me heavenly information wow. to say, go drop my and nets. It, and it outweighs the earthly. Yes, well, the same way for us. Yes. When our accountant looks at our bank account and goes, there's no money. Yeah. That is earthly information. Well, or when you receive the stock market report. Oh, I know. New York Stock Exchange. Whatever. That is earthly information. Earthly information but, but heavenly, heavenly revelation says that I have more than enough. So when the doctor tells me, you know, you're not doing not well. Good. Wow. You're going to die or you're going to be sick or this is going to cost a lot of money to get you fixed. Sounds like a broken down car. <laughs> but that is earthly, earthly information. information. And you, you take it. You do. That's called a fact. But you don't receive it. But the truth outweighs the it fact. Does. It does. And we need heavenly revelation. That's good. Because what that does mean that I receive what heaven is giving to me. Amen. Today. So just receive that. Today. Yes. Receive heavenly revelation that God is for you. He is your provider. He is your healer. He is your restoration. That's right. And he's causing all of a sudden the crooked ways, the empty nest, nest That's of our lives That's right. to become full. With 153 big fish. To overflowing. I never knew 153. Isn't that neat? I went to Bible school. And I, I love it because it shows me again the God of detail that we yeah, have. That is I mean, he truly wants us to see wow. because a big net, you know, I fish not well, and we've even told that story, so there's no reason to tell it again. But the thing is, it depends on the weight of your line. Mm. You know, I have yeah. deep sea fished, yeah. and you have to have a heavy, a line. heavy line. So when I say I've caught a fish, it could be this big. Or it could be huge that costs fish stories. Fish okay. stories that that are hundreds of pounds. Yeah. Well, have you ever watched like them uh, do tuna fishing? See, and I and I really don't yeah. watch. I'll it. just I don't. You know, we don't have cable. Deadless but, catch and all those no. different things. But anyways, if you ever watch those tuna, those tuna they're as big as this table. They're huge. They're massive. And then imagine 153 of those tunas. Chicken of the sea. Well, and we're going to get into that in the <laughs> next verses of 9 through 11. Because what we're going to see here, we see the nets overflowing. Mm -hmm. We see that he's called other boats in to help him. Yes. But the purpose of it was to have a supernatural exchange. So here's the exchange. Verse and 8. This is what I want you to get because it's for you today. Amen. Right now. Right now. It's a supernatural and divine exchange. Verse 8. 8 through 11. Yes, ma'am. It says, when Simon Peter saw this. He fell at Jesus' knees. There's a response that takes place. Oh. There's been so many times where where I know for Jesse and I in our, our seven years of marriage, we've seen an absolute supernatural financial breakthrough. And you cannot help but fall to your knees and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Right? It's it's yes, it might be from a paycheck, or yes, it might be from, but ultimately, who is our provider? It's God. But I'm gonna interject here. You fall to your knees. We also need to fall to our knees before we see it. Yes. That is true. That is the hard part. That is true. But there's those moments yeah. where it comes through and you're just like, Oh my thank goodness, you, Lord. where did that come from? Thank yes. you, Lord. So Peter, Simon Peter fell to his knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. That's right. And this reminds me in, in Song of Solomon where she says, I am dark. That's I am right. black. I am full of sin. And in that moment of, of Song of Solomon, when, when she says this, he looks at her and he declares over her that, in fact, she is the beloved. That's right. That she is beautiful. She is her spotless. Her winter has passed. And all of a sudden, the newness of life has come. And this is the same thing that and, happens and here. And Peter is realizing how foolish she was. Yeah. He's, he's having that reality oh, check. Oh, I know. I know. And through it all, when he realizes how dark, how, how sinful he is, all of a sudden, the response of Jesus, it's, amazing. it's so beautiful. Okay. So, verse 9, we see we see the man's response, right? Okay. Man's response is that all of his companions, they were astonished, which is an absolutely supernatural experience. Astonished right. means bewildered. They're in shock. They, they're awestruck. It says they were astonished at the catch of the fish that, that had been taken. So, were James, John, and their partners. Then Jesus said to Peter. So this is where he's prophesying over him. That's right. And he says, do not be afraid for now you will fish for people. So he's declaring over him his future. That's right. Which we know the future of Peter. But at the time, he was Peter a, didn't even know what his future was. He didn't even know what his name was, right? Well, the thing <laughs> was is that he was a horrible fisherman. He wasn't very good. No, 
He it was not a good one, and neither were the other ones that were there with so, him. So, verse 11, they pulled their boats up on the shore, they left everything, and they followed after Jesus. So, you need to understand, so there was goodness. some words there, and it said, for he and all. Wow. So, yes. the whole boat was absolutely astonished. And, and and dad growing up he used to tell me every time you see the word astonished or bewildered or awestruck that is a supernatural experience right that is a moment where you are in absolute shock your mind is suspended your right. earthly mind is right. suspended because supernatural has invaded your life and if you've ever had a moment like that where you're sitting there going, okay, how did this happen? That's right. How did this work in the natural? Because it didn't. It's supernatural. That's right. It is his super invading our natural That's earth. That's good. So it's a, it was a supernatural moment. So astonish. I'm going to give you the Hebrew. Oh, yeah. I don't know the Hebrew. Yes. <laughs> means dumbfounded. Yeah. Wow. You know, shock and awe. What, shock what, and what awe. are the other words? Bewilderment. Bewildered and all the others. Stupefied. <laughs> I love that word. You By surprise. Said, you realize, ooh, I'm real stupid. <laughs> Stupefied by surprise, <laughs> amazed, amazed, and rendered immovable. Yeah, you're you're just frozen. You're, they they were astonished. You're you're, you're literally stopped. And then in your we tracks. need to come back to this. These were fishermen. Yeah, it tells you they had never seen a catch like that yes. in their lives. It's it's like the farmer realizing, oh wait a second, I just had a bountiful crop. Right, and I and some how did that happen? Some farmers right? have told us we've had a, a you know a, a bountiful, bumper a bumper, yeah, crop a bumper crop over and over and over again. But this you. this absolutely shocked them. Wow! But the whole purpose of it was is so that Jesus could start lining up the men mm -hmm. that were going to be with him. The Literally, they're the groundbreakers of the early church. That's right. And we know that the scripture says Jesus turns to Peter at in the scripture, and I'm probably taking no, all no, no, your you're stuff. fine. I, I'm loving it. No, but Jesus turns to to uh, Peter, and he says, "Upon this rock, That's right. I will build my church, right. and the gates of hell will not prevail against it." And I want us to get that. If you right now are a pastor or a leader. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church, the, the universal That's church, right. the church that God founded, right. that Jesus was trailblazing right here in Luke chapter 5 and verse, uh, what is it, 10. We see that Jesus was trailblazing the early church right That's here. Right. And so nothing can stop the church. You That's might have right. the door closed right now. But just because the doors are closed doesn't mean you're closed, right? right? We are the body of Christ. We are the church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. But the thing I want you to get this, and this was something that I knew years ago because I had had a teaching with it and it absolutely blessed my socks off. Mm -hmm. You saw Peter, James, and John. Okay, those yes. are the three that were in the boat. Mm -hmm. Okay. But Jesus not only blessed them, they not only saw the miracles of it, He provided, Jesus provided for them yes. and their families. Yes. He didn't ask them to leave everything and have their family poor. Yes. He provided enough funds with the 153 fish <laughs> that they would be able to have their I've been families. I've a little bit bigger than this. <laughs> but to have their families taken care yes. of. And we even know beyond this that mm -hmm. Peter had a mother-in-law. So we're talking a wife. Exactly. That's right, okay. Jesse. Just feel sorry for him. But <laughs> Peter Jesse's had Peter. A, Yes, he is. He had a mother-in-law. I don't know if Jesse would call Jesus to heal me, but that's okay. <laughs> but <Different story. laughs> yes. But however, that being said, Jesus launched. provided for the yes. family. And and that's something we're not just coming up with this. Oh, we heard a teaching. No, um, this is in the Word of God. Yes, and and even more than that, theologians they 100 percent agree. This right here yeah. was part of the financial underskirt yes. of the ministry of Jesus well, you see for it. the disciples. I mean, this was a bountiful crop. So there's so much that's happening in this scripture. Oh, I know. We're seeing that not only is obedience being received, and that's very important for us to catch tonight. If God's been on your heart in, in, in blessing someone, be obedient yes. to that. Be obedient to that because you cannot outgive God, right? Absolutely. We also see that a calling is being given, a prophetic calling. We're seeing that Peter's being told that you're going to not just fish for fish, you're going to fish for men. But he was also saying that to John and James. He as was well. saying that prophetically over these and men. And even us. As, exactly, even us as well. We're prophetically yeah. going to be uh, seeing souls one into the kingdom of God. And even more than that, he's saying, you know what? No matter what, I've got your back and I'm financially. 
undergirding you well, in the mission were, of Jesus. They were literally in an economic downturn. Yes. They had gone out toiled all night. Yes. They had nothing. Yes. I think that's called bankruptcy. Ah, I think it sounds like fun. <laughs> So I'm telling you tonight, if you're Somewhere facing, Zacchaeus might be in here too, yeah, that no. tax man's calling. If you're in a place where you have lack yeah. and you don't know how the bills are going to be paid, yes. realize that Jesus has come and commandeered your life wow. so that you can have more than enough so to do good. what God's called you to That's do. That's so good. He not only gives us yeah. the vision, he gives us the provision for the vision. <laughs> and right. he's so faithful to do that. He's saying, hey, you're going to fish for people but you know what? I'm going to give you the provision to do That's so. That's right. He's That's not going to leave you alone. Is. Amen. He, he not only gets in our boat, but he gets in our business. I know he does. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's turn to Psalms 34. Psalms 34. I We're feel like you gave me this one to read. I did. I okay. did give you this one because I want you to hear again how he desires to give you supernaturally a bountiful increase. And and again, we're talking more about finances tonight. Yes, we are. But this also does apply to healing. Well, that's that heaven, heavenly revelation it's, for earthly information. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's the blessing completely surrounded and encompassing. But I really feel in my heart tonight for some of us, this is hitting hard financially. This is God saying, you know what? I've got your back concerning finances. When you've got to trust him. Yes. You know, even Peter, even though he didn't know who he was, Amen. said, okay, nevertheless, let's go do what you tell me to do. Amen. So Psalms okay. 34 and verse 9 through 10. 9 through 10. It says, fear the Lord. And we've talked about this That's uh, in, in previous yeah. Bible studies. It's honoring him. It's respecting him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack Nothing. Excuse me. Those who fear him, those who honor him, those who trust him, lack, lack nothing. nothing. And and again, that's not just talking about finances. You don't lack peace. Oh, and you, you don't, don't lack, lack healing joy. in your body. You don't lack restoration. You don't lack the, the health of your soul. No. You lack nothing. Verse 10. Is that correct? No, yes. Okay. The, the lions, lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. So that's no good thing. You know, I, I wouldn't have a good life if I didn't have Grace and Michelle and Jesse and Mike. Almost forgot him. <laughs> and then I wouldn't There's have... There's one more. What's, I know, what's, what's his name? name? What's, what's his name? name? But okay. no good thing means I wouldn't be able to be mm. healthy. That yes. Grace is healthy. Yes. That COVID-19 can't come to my household. Hallelujah. And it is broken in the in name Jesus of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And, and businesses are being restored. And that's yes. why I so want you to understand that if you're in the midst of a situation, no matter what your business is, yes. bankruptcy is not, not the plan of God. No, 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 he no, no. will take your economic downturn and, and supernaturally Amen. give you the ability to see it prosper like never before. I truly feel in my heart just over and over again, he is turning the tables. He is coming into the temple That's right. and he's flipping some things on its That's head. It. And he's going, you know what? It might look like this. That, that was the custom of the time, right? It was right. the market in the temple. And yet he came in and in a moment he it turned changed. it upside down. And I believe that God is coming into your life. Amen. He's coming into your business, into your finances, into your family. And he's flipping some tables. That's right. And he's saying this might be how it was for generations. There might be a generation of lack or a generation of not enough. That's right. But you know what? I've come to flip some things That's upside it. down. I'm going to give and you ultimately, supernatural. it's right side up. Right. Exactly. Hallelujah. Exactly. That's what God So does. Psalms 34, 9 through 10. Okay. This one we all know. Psalms 23. Oh. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I love this. This is NIV. I lack mm. nothing. Ooh, so Psalm 23, verse 1, NIV. Yeah, that's yours. That is mine, but I can't get there because it's paper quick. <laughs> I lack nothing. I, I want to nothing. challenge you to put that on your mirror. Wow, so Psalms 23, and verse 1. And it says in the NIV, Lord the Lord shepherd. is my shepherd, I lack I nothing. Because I, I know it is I shall not want. Right. But I like that. I lack nothing. I lack nothing. It's just concise and there's the again there's confidence in that we've been talking about this the the past i believe it's now been 10 yeah. weeks 10 weeks i lack nothing there's confidence i lack nothing there's not an arrogance no. there's not pride but there's confidence in knowing my god shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through christ jesus. jesus it's the same confidence that paul had it's the same confidence that we need to have 
I lack nothing. So no the things. Lord is my shepherd. That means he controls me. He watches over me. He, he protects me. me. He guides me. I lack nothing. I like nothing. So write that mm -hmm. on your refrigerator, on your mirror, and remind yourself. Okay, here's mm -hmm. the next one. It is Luke 22, verse 35. Oh, and before yeah. Michelle reads this, I want to let you guys know, as you probably already realize, we traveled for over 10 plus years. And whenever we would go into a place, we would ask for nothing. We wouldn't mm -hmm. take we wouldn't take a set amount. We would just come in, we'd pay all our expenses, and it was not a time that went by we didn't hear, who's your main backer? And we would always say, Jesus. Yes. And I want you to know that no matter what you do for a living, He is your backer. Amen. He, he is the there. He will provide and He'll always make a way. So read Luke 22 verse 35. Luke chapter 22 and verse 35. Then Jesus asked them, and whenever he's asking a question, he, wants he knows answer. the answer. Yeah. He's not sitting there going, well, I'm just kind of wondering. No, he always asks a question I love his knowing questions. the answer. And he's, he's asking not because he's wondering, but because he's wanting you That's to right. answer it. Because in other words, he's wanting it to get down into your spirit. So Jesus asked them, when I sent you without a purse or a bag or sandals, did you lack anything? And their response. Nothing. We lacked nothing, they answered. I love that. Nothing. I love that nothing. because that's what we saw in our life. Yes. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. And we're to that point even in our lives today. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. And you need to get that in your yeah. heart so that when people come to you and say, how are you making it? Why Why are you making it? It's because Jesus has come into your life and you lack, and nothing. You lack nothing. Now, does that mean that there aren't needs? That there's not oh, wants? No. Hello? No. You live in a world where you know you got to go buy a loaf of bread. That doesn't mean that. But you're not sitting there toiling, panicking, lacking, going, what do I do? How do I make this work? That's How worry. Gonna... That's, that's, what did you say or earlier? Toll? Toiling. 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 Sounds like toilet paper. No, it isn't. It's toll. Toiling. That's toiling. And you are not created to, to toil. toil. No. no, it's not. That's not <laughs> that sounds like oil. It's not toil. It's toil. Toil. I can't say it now. Toll. I know. See, she Toil. was saying it wrong. Toll. Toll. I can't. Anyway, you were not no. created to do that. You weren't. But in Psalms 23 uh, yes. and verse 1, when it says, Lord is my shepherd, this just keeps coming over and over again, so I feel okay. like I need to say it. The Lord is my shepherd. That means he guides us. That's right. And for some of us right now, we need major direction. Oh, we all do. We need some major direction. We need to know what to do. What to do and what and not to do. And how to do it. How to do it. How not to do it. And how to do it with the finances that God has already put already in our hands. Already given you. But we want to make certain that we always, as we say, Amen. lack nothing. Lack nothing. But if that's you and you're sitting there going, God, I really need direction. I really need direction on what to do. Maybe how to open. Maybe go into a new phase. How not to open. And you're just sitting there going, God, I don't know what to do. We're just going to pray direction yes. over you yes. because the Lord is your shepherd. I lack nothing. That I means nothing. you don't lack wisdom, right? If any man lacks wisdom, the let him ask. ask. But let I was just, ask. when you were talking, I looked down in my scriptures here. And in Luke 5, verse 10, you know, and so were James and John, the son of Zebedee, and their partners with Simon, Peter. And Jesus said to Simon, and I, I saw this and we read it, do not, not be afraid. afraid. Wow. And I think sometimes in the times that we're living yeah. in, terror yeah. can be something that will take away yeah. that heavenly revelation. Yes. And we need to understand that the revelation is already there. Wow. And fear cuts the supernatural. Yeah, well, it'll, it cuts our cut ties well. with Him because He will either, you know, like we said one time, Faith and fear are magnets. Yes. So what do I want attached to me? I want wow. faith. Yes. I want the harvest. I want my shepherd. Yes. I want him to lead and guide and protect me and give me the wisdom. Yes. So tonight, it's time. Amen. It's time Amen. for you to quit toiling. It's time. She said for, it right. <laughs> I know. It's time for you to be astounded. Yes. To realize that 
that shock and awe, the, the, the things that he has provided for you is because he is your shepherd. Amen. And you shall not lack anything. You shall anything. not lack anything. So, Michelle, if you'll just pray, I just want you guys to know in the days ahead, don't be shocked. Amen. Don't in any way be shaken by the world. Amen. Be only in awe of Him. I love it. This morning, y'all heard it on the on the Park and Praise. Dad said it last week. It was so powerful. He said, God is my rock, and He does not roll. I like that. And I think that is so fantastic because He is our rock, and we are not shaken when we find a firm foundation. I love that. And, and we just need to trust in Him. Amen. You yeah, trust in Him. So Michelle, if you'll goodness. say a word prayer. Hallelujah. So Father, we thank You for Your provision. <clears throat> we thank You that when we are with You and in You, that we lack nothing, no good thing. I declare right now, Father, that everyone that is listening to this, that they lack nothing. They nothing. have no lack in their health. No. They have no lack in their relationships. They have no lack no. in their finances. They have no lack in the fruit of the Spirit. They have no lack in peace or joy. Yes, yes, Father, yes. you have given us an abundant life, life to the full. Father, I thank you that in this coming week that, that awestruck and wonder and shock and bewilderment becomes the lifestyle of your children. Yes. That, Father, we are absolutely amazed and shocked with the goodness of God yes. that is being poured out and down on us. And Father, we thank you right now that we lack no good thing. Why? Because you are a shepherd. Yes. We are listening to your voice. We are walking out in obedience. And we are following after you. Amen. And we thank you for this Amen. in your precious name. Amen. So be blessed. Hallelujah. We will see you next Sunday. Next Sunday. And if you're watching the online church, you'll get to hear my sermon. Yes. It's I'm be good. excited. It was one that truly... I don't know, it touched me over a bag of chips that I was given. We love chips. I know. <laughs> but God doesn't want us guilty. He wants us to be guilt-free. Amen. Guilt-free. It's guilt the best. Guilt-free. And so, guys, thank you so much for thank watching. You. And I want you to realize that you've been called and chosen for this hour. Amen. We love you guys. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday.